We have found that, you know, the steel pan keeps the kids well grounded. It also keeps them focused. And what we have noticed is that kids who lean towards music normally do well in school. So our main focus is, is the children. Um, it keeps them out of trouble, off the streets, bring them into our place of practice and, and help them along. We mentor them um, and we find that has worked real well for them. For someone that's musically inclined, I would say within six weeks they would start playing the music. Um, outside of that, no music at all, it may take a little longer. We know for a fact, you know, through the steel drum, most of the kids learn without writing and reading music. So that is a challenge in itself, but that's a history of the steel pan. Actually, it was founded many years ago during the 1940s. And what happened is the United States had a, a base, Navy base in Trinidad, and uh, they would discard the old steel drums. And so um, back in the islands, you know, you, you go back from the days of slavery when, when, when the folks would either take something to make music. And so they started using bamboo sticks, they would use discarded tins. And then one day the guy picked up a drum and he found that he could probably make different sounds with the drum. And so that, that was the birth of the steel pan. Today we have a soprano pan with 28 notes on it. And we could play anything from classical to reggae to calypso to you name it, rock and roll. They have considered the instrument the instrument of the 20th century. Um, we have seen large bands of 100 pieces in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and it's all over the world. We see in Trinidad, once a year they have something called a panorama, and that panorama consists of maybe 100 bands that are well over 100 players strong. And so it's the only, the only type of function that you would see 100 bands participating in. 100 players. And these players are all youngsters, they're all kids.